off. Well, still on to other issues of the focus on this program. As the saying goes, power infrastructure is not just a utility. It is a vital artery of modern society. The recurring nationwide blackout is crippling economic growth, and for the fifth time in 2024, the national electricity grid experienced another collapse plunging the country into a blackout. The latest grid collapse is coming despite the deployment of a digital system called Generation Deep Loss Detection System by the Transmission Company of Nigeria to swiftly detect and respond to a sudden drop in power generation. Tunde, I'll come to you on this because when this tariff hike was increased, everyone was thinking perhaps we wouldn't have this again. So one is wondering why we're having this collapse system, despite the hike in tariff. Well, if you could remember about uh, two weeks ago, we, we discussed exactly this issue, when the, the, the fourth collapse occurred mm -hmm. in Nigeria within this year. Mm -hmm. You see, I think the, the, the problem is that we are putting much load on the network that we have. What will make a, a, net, a, a, a national grid to collapse from 4.0 megawatts to 1.3 under three days? Because when you look at these statistics now, as at, uh, as at uh, Saturday evening, it was it was 4.067 megawatts. But by the time it was uh, uh, Sunday evening, it was 1.25 for a country of 200 million. Like South Africa, at any point in time, they have 45 megawatts to power their system. So the thing is that something deep that the minister or, the, our, 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 our energy policy, we have not tracked it. Mm. And that is what will make the entire system to collapse Collapsing and coming back again. So definitely something is eating deep within this power infrastructure system. But if we tackle that one, even if we can increase it to 25 megawatts, and I believe it is human, it is human. It is, so far, this is technology. It is powered by people. It is maintained by people. So I think the the onus is that you increase the tariff, band A, band B, band C. You categorize Nigeria, and yet there is no power anywhere. What happens to the money they have been collecting? Does it mean that they are not plowing the money back into ensuring the stability of the power system in Nigeria? We have to do that. We have to, we have to ask questions for the power minister for power, because we have a minister for power now. He has to do something about it, because it is injustice for Nigerians to be paying so much, and yet there's nothing for it. If you are paying so much, and there's regular supply of power, look at the way it will impact on on, on, on services generally in the country. Right. The cost of uh, social services will increase. People cannot store food again. I can't remember the last time. I <laughs> have three refrigerators in my house. Yes, I can tell you. I have two deep freezers ah. and one fridge. I can't remember the last time I put something inside there. Not because there's nothing to put there, but there's no sense in putting it there because you are not sure of electricity. So something seriously is wrong with our power generation, power and distribution. distribution, and transmission system. Something is wrong until we go back to the fundamentals and look at what is wrong. We'll just be collecting money from people. No, those people will lose out. It is people that has no meter. Mm. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Because that's, they will pass, the they will, because they will pass it on to people who have no meter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you will pay. You can imagine people living on bands D paying 20,000 per month. Mm. <laughs> 20,000 naira per month. At least you categorize band D as people who are in the semi or band A. Yeah. And you now give them 25,000 naira per month. Somebody living in a room and parlor. <laughs> you give him time. And the light that he doesn't consume. He doesn't consume. And in most cases, houses that are, has about 20 tenants yeah. or 15 tenants, you ask them to go and pay 100,000. There will be conflict between the landlord and, and, the, the, tenants. and the tenants every day. So I think we have to do something. Something is fundamentally wrong, wrong somewhere. Both in transmission, right. distribution, and, and generation. generation. With this, with this point, uh, where do you think the government isn't looking? Because when we have invested so much in the power sector, do you think the government isn't looking at the right direction or perhaps it's just throwing its eyes on the other side? You know, as you said, some time ago when we discussed this, we, we said something. You cannot build something or nothing. Mm -hmm. And this is what we are doing with the electricity sector. When the telecommunication sector was deregulated, what happened? Those investors built their own masks and everything. They didn't rely on NITEL facilities. Right. But in the power sector today, they are all relying 
on old neighbors uh, facilities therefore they are not been if if there's any one of the investors that is watching this program he or she should call in and tell us what investment they have made they have not made any people up till tomorrow still buy their transformer their wires mm -hmm. and so on and so forth they have not made any concrete investment. They might be saying we are arguing from the point of ignorance, but from, <laughs> what, we, from what I know, they should tell us, this is what we have invested, that okay, oh, it is not a thing that will yield a dividend immediately like the telecom sector. They should let us know. Because what you normally do in a business, when you start a business, you charge rock bottom price. Let everybody follow you. And when they see that your service is good, you begin to increase. But now, you have not in, improved on your services. You have band A, band B, whatever, and so on and so forth. People are paying for what they are not consuming. And in that situation, there is no way you are going to grow. Because even if the generation is improved upon, it's like you have a, a, a stadium or a, um, a venue where you have uh, thousands of people and you have only one entrance. People are going to step on themselves and that is what is happening here. So even if they are, the generation is able to improve and generate whatever megawatts that will serve the country, if they pour it all into the national grid, everything will trip off. So we need, or they need to invest in all these things very well. Mm. It is not uh, appropriate, or it is not important, that Ibadan, electricity, mm. will be the one serving Lagos, some part of Lagos, Abi Okuta, and the rest of them. When you travel abroad, and our leaders, and even the investors themselves, they travel abroad. Your house can be here. My house can be here. The uh, power service that you are using might be different from mine. So why should everybody be... In fact, there was a time I, I, I traveled. A friend just moved into a house. The moment he registered with the... Uh, uh -huh. estate and they gave him the key almost 10 power companies sent him through his email and his phone that he registered sent him offers to use them as his electricity uh, company <laughs> but here in Nigeria it is only one why is that so so why is it that they are doing that it is because they have invested and they are ready to give you services. If this one gives you this today and you say you are no longer interested, you want to move to another one, you tell them they have some concessions they will give you. But here, we are stuck with only one. And that one, they have, I'm still very, very convinced. And if during this program or after this program, any one of them says that they have invested, they should let they us know. They have not. What mm. have they invested? Mm. The, the same um, high tension wire and everything that I'm never cool. used when I was a small child is still what they are using today. They have not extended it beyond. <laughs> when you build a house, you mm. are the one that would buy your cable, you are the one that would do this, you would do that. You even buy your meter. I think it's short. They just, the, the, the government then that sold and uh, so called NEPA, mm. they just stripped Nigeria of its resources and handed it over to people. You see, in Nigeria, it is primitive accumulation of capital. They did not sell it to people who can manage it as a business. Yes. They sold it to themselves. So when they sold it to themselves, thinking that the government they have put in place will always rub their back. We have monopoly in everything in Nigeria. Only, only telecommunication that is better, yes. fairer a little bit. In power, a monopoly. Water corporation, no water. No road, local government you cannot construct. State government cannot construct. Federal government, no money. So we until we if we want to run a capitalist system, 
Let us run the capitalist system. We are no, the capitalist driver. system we will make sure that it works. It works. We are not running the capitalist system. system. It that is, doesn't work. It, it, is, it is no longer capitalist. Yeah, we understand the position yes. put it. But in all of this, don't you think that we should diversify our source of generating power? Because if we're looking at just hydro, and this is the, the challenge we're having, can't you look at other means of generating power, for instance? The, the thing is that, uh, let us start with deregulation and empowering the state, each of the states. Lagos State today, we, I am sure we ask the commissioner, the governor, or the commissioner for other trade and special of power, energy, they know the power need of Lagos yeah. as a state, a state of 32 million people. If you go to your state, they know. The thing is that, let, yes, the president has signed that bill. I want to see any state in Nigeria besides Lagos and probably Rivers or your, let them begin that move. Let them use that window, invite people all over as many as possible de de distribution companies. I think the problem lies in the fact that in Nigeria today, we still have world transmitter company, TCN. If TCN don't transmit to the distribution companies, there's nothing you could. Jenko will generate, they will give it to TCN, TCN will give it to distribution companies. And in Lagos, is, we only have only one distribution company. That's what it's talking about, only Ikeja. So when you have only a Kedja to a city of 20 million, how are you going to get it? So you have the best EKDC, not just a Kedja distribution company. No, you know, you know, EKDC and ECO is more or less, uh, EKDC, Kedja is more or less 80% of the population of Lagos. Yeah. So we need about 10 in Lagos. So that we can, let us really deregulate it and make it. There's no point in the state putting their money in. If that law is not amended that you have to generate your power and give it to CCN, it cannot work. This year will continue to determine where the power is distributed to. They even give it to Nigeria Republic before they give it to Nigeria. You'll be surprised. Besides so that, you have to deregulate everything. Mm. You also talk of alternative uh, source, source, source of, of power. power supply. The Nigerian, the Nigerian investor is always looking for the way out, the easy way Cheapest out. way. If there are those who are not looking for the easy way out, the first thing to do is to look at the other set, uh, the other parts that we have not looked at. We have tried uh, hydro; it's not working well. We have tried uh, uh, gas, and it's not working. Well. What about solar that we have in abundance? But the problem with that is they know they have to start from the scratch, and nobody wants. We want to climb a tree from the top. Nobody wants to start from the scratch. Mm. All those investors, let them go start the solar whatever now and see whether it will not uh, yield the benefits, yield the yeah. results are looking at. All right, let's quickly go on a very quick break. We'll have more discussions on journalist hangout. Stay with us. <laughs>